Uh, we're going to go over to Nuevo County right now, run up to Frankenmuth, Michigan. Uh, but we're going to run down to Birmingham right now, Birmingham, we're Michigan. Up at Northwood University. And we're uh, go over to South Haven, Delaney, Eastern Michigan University. You'll be hearing us from all over the place, but that's the beauty of this broadcast. Now, from the studios in downtown Lansing, it's Chris Holman's Business Beat. It is, and we are in those studios. As a matter of fact, very fortunate to start the day off in a very correct manner. Carol Kane, CBS 62 senior producer and uh, Detroit Free Press columnist, as well as host of the ever popular Michigan Matters. How are you doing, Carol? Chris, I am doing fabulous. I, I just had a question for you, though. Uh, I have been trying to get you to come down to Detroit to do the show. I'm hoping you're going to be coming in sometime soon. I am coming. As a matter of fact, I think we're scheduled. Okay. I think we we're got scared. it down on the books here. There you go. A week or so. Yeah. So I, you know, I die for chances to come down and be on your show. It's just really great. <laughs> you know, it's interesting though. We might take a moment to acknowledge uh, someone who seemed to be there every time I came down as well, and a mutual friend of ours, and we're going to miss him, Brooks Patterson. Oh yeah, the, the Oakland County Executive. You know, he was one of the founding members of Michigan Matters. Yeah. With me, along with Denise Illich, and was on the show with me virtually most weeks for 15 years. And he passed away of pancreatic cancer August after a very short fight with it. And um, we're, we're certainly going to miss him. And people who knew Brooks Patterson either loved him or didn't love him. Yeah. There was no middle ground with him, but he was very pro business, and that was always front and central to a lot of his programs and things like. Automation Alley and emerging sectors and other things that he was talking about, gosh, 20, 30 years ago. You know, it's interesting. I remember Ken telling me, Ken, of course, the former executive of Automation Alley, telling me about Brooks calling him in his office and saying, Ken, we got to do this thing. We got to get uh, all kinds of companies involved and we have to charge them dues. And by the way, I don't have any money to pay you, so you got to get out there and make your own salary. <laughs> that was it. Well, in fact, Ken also, he, he ran Automation Alley along with Brooks. Yeah. From the very beginning, he was the one who was actually kind of behind the levers all the years and was Brooks's deputy and was doing double duty at Automation Alley. And he retired in 2016, and there's a guy named Tom Kelly who's now the CEO of it. But they have been doing much. In fact, uh, Automation Alley folks just got back from a trip to China on Friday along with MEDC and five companies from Michigan. And they seem to be putting a big push on global, particularly on China. Well, you know, it's interesting because I, ju- I just had talked to them about two weeks before they uh, left. Noel was in, kind of in charge of that, and um, you know I try to help where I can and kind of direct where I can. But they do a they do a great job with the people that they have and lining them up with uh, seeing some of the right people. You can go there and see what you think are the right people and and just not get anything done because you got to generally speaking have kind of a communist party guy in the room and. Uh, <laughs> You know, if you're going to get, well, there's if you're no gonna... doubt that, that doing business in China is not for the faint at heart. It is really <laughs> difficult. It is difficult to navigate the political business landscape, and it's a communist country. Let's be honest; things yeah. are very different there. And with the trade war that continues on between Beijing and Washington, it's making it difficult for people here in Michigan trying to build two-way bridges. In fact, Chris, you've been making pushes into China as well. How have you found the trade situation? In well. You know, it's interesting because I'm a 29-year veteran of doing business in China, and I've had a factory there for about uh, 16 of those years. Of late, it has been very difficult. For the first time in 32 trips there, I had to postpone a meeting because personal friends who are in positions of authority were kind of asked not to meet because of the the present circumstance. And so, you know, they said, we can meet with you. We can't do anything official. We can't sign anything, et cetera, et cetera. So we just kind of put it off and we are going back in October and things are appearing to be a little better. But, you know, with our policy, I don't know if that's going to change by Wednesday, right? And Well, this is is true. Well, and and it's sort of uh, the President Trump, who's at the forefront, obviously, of what's going on with the U.S. side of this conversation conversations going back and forth. Will they get some sort of an agreement? Will the 2020 election factor in? Will it be done? And I know everybody, even MEDC, Jeff Mason, who's the CEO, yeah. talked with me and talked a little bit about some of the consternations people are having. But I think people like yourself who are in the trenches doing work, trying to get things done and doing things that have two-way economic benefit to certainly here in the state and creating jobs and, and benefit are still just you know having to do what they're doing. It's just 
seems to be a little bit tougher. Well, and just the fact that investment from China dropped 80% in this last year and a half, and that's all a direct yeah. correlation to this and stuff. But we did celebrate opening of diplomatic relations with China, and Detroit played an incredible part. And uh, so you hosted a ping pong tournament to celebrate. The, the ping pong, yeah, Detroit China Day, which was Friday, September 13th, was marking the 40th anniversary of diplomatic relations between China and the U.S. And it all stemmed back to ping pong. The Chinese government invited the American team into play, and then the Chinese team came over here, and Richard Nixon, if you recall, went over there. And it started when the Chinese ping pong team came into the, they landed in Detroit, started in Detroit, then went to Ann Arbor and did some other significant cities around the country. But it was 40 years of diplomatic relations, and that was what the ping pong event, the China Day event, last Friday was, and um, our representatives from Chongqing, the Council General from Chicago, leaders from Lansing and Detroit, and uh, it was it was an interesting event. You know, it's kind of interesting from their perspective, too. You you go to China, and you say, who do you think were our greatest presidents? And Richard Nixon is one of them, which would not be oh, one of our first choices, because he opened China, right? He did. He opened modern rule. Well, since it became a communist government in 1949, it wasn't until 19... What year was it? It was 47 years ago yeah. when they originally you know, started with this ping-pong diplomacy, which is how this all, the conversations got started. Hence, when the Council General and representative from Lansing played a, a symbolic, a friendly game of ping-pong, just kind of reiterating that, indeed, it was ping-pong that kind of helped open the door. Sports is an opening conversation piece, including <laughs> politics, too. It certainly is. Carol Kane, uh, as usual, never have enough time with you. Uh, I will see you in your studio soon. Carol Kane, CBS 62, senior producer, Detroit Free Press columnist and host of Michigan Matters. You're listening to the Michigan Business Beat on the Michigan Business Network. I'm Chris Holman.